Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tax. Behind me is a pretty rare sight for my channel. This is my project car garage and I normally have a 2004 R32 parked here, but it's not here because lately it got a bit cold in Wisconsin and now it is ice racing season. So I've worked the last couple days to make sure I could put this car back together, head to Wisconsin and get a couple ice race sessions in. I don't know if we're gonna get another session uh, this year. For the last three days, 12 hour days, making sure this is put back together, but the inside is only a driver's seat, none of the panels are in other than the, the driver's door panel because I need to roll down the windows. But yeah, so it's been a great couple days, challenging couple three days getting this ready. I did it because I don't know if I have another opportunity to ice race this year. I'm gonna jump in the truck, head to Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Ice racing's actually tomorrow. I'm meeting up with some buddies tonight that have ice raced before, and they're gonna look over my car and uh, you know tell me what's wrong or what's right. We gotta make sure it actually runs and drives correctly because all I did is I removed it from the garage, put it on the trailer. I'd rather test it with a bunch of other guys than test it by myself here and break down. Without further ado, let's jump in the truck and head to Wisconsin. All right guys, so at this point in the video, I've made my way up to Wisconsin. I arrived at about six o'clock at night and that's when I caught up with my buddies that I haven't seen in a couple months because they live four hours away from me. We also casually discussed what I've done through the R32 over the last couple months and what they believed needed to be done for tomorrow's ice racing. Saturday ice racing started at 2 p.m. So we knew we had the morning to get the crucial work done. When we woke up on Saturday morning, uh, they really believed I needed to do an oil change. I didn't believe so because it wasn't that much, but thinking about it, the engine's stressing, uh, it is racing, it's been sitting for a while, I don't know how old this oil is. So the first thing I did is I ran to O'Reilly's Auto Park and I got all those things to do an oil change, even though I have them in this cabinet right here. I just decided 50 bucks in oil change stuff is cheaper than a blown engine. So I did a quick oil change and then we focused on tow straps. A big thing in ice racing is getting stuck in tow banks. If you recall in one of my videos, I actually had the tow bolt in the front end had been snapped off inside of the actual uh, nut there. I don't have a welder here, so I took advantage of my buddy's house. We welded on a bolt and it was it was really a tough time to get it off until we realized for some reason those tow eyes or whatever that way your tow bolt gets put in there, it, it's counter threaded. So it was pretty easy. Once we welded the nut on, once we figured out it was counter threaded, the broken nut came on and I just took the stock R32 tow bolt and put it in that hole. The rear on the R32 is a bigger challenge. Normally when you're ice racing, you would crash head first into a bank and then the truck's got to pull you out. Uh, there's no tow uh, strap area in the rear. So what we did is we found an area in the frame and we put a carriage bolt through there and then through the bumper there's a gap which I'll show you an image now where we actually ran a strap in case I went into a bank and then you put the remainder of the strap in the trunk of the car so when you're racing it's not in the way and then we drove off to the races which was about an hour and 20 minutes away from my buddy's house up in Stevens Point Wisconsin and that's where we're picking up from next So you just watched the time lapse of me unloading the R32 and then driving it somewhere and then putting on the ice tire. So what happens there now is since the season's been pretty warm, uh, they only wanted the guys with the spiked tires to park on the actual lake. The rest of the guys would park in the parking lot of the establishment we are at. Couple things you need to bring when you go ice racing. Firstly, if you see when I'm changing the tires, I'm really laying down on the ice. I don't have any waterproof clothes. I don't really care to change 400 times uh, due to the season. So I just wear jeans all year round. 
but that poses a problem when you're rolling down on the ice changing tires your body's hot melts the ice and you get wet so I would really recommend you bring a tarp if you're doing this on top of that the tools you need to bring are just a generic toolbox uh, like one of these craftsman box up there multi tools um, then you also need a torque wrench uh, to make sure your wheels are torqued on correctly you definitely need a tire pump uh, ice racing tires are notori notorious to losing air so you need a tire pump I'll put a link below on the tire pump I use it's a battery powered Milwaukee where you set your PSI it's perfect um, on top of that you definitely need a car jack ideally a nice one not the one that comes with your car makes life a lot easier and then uh, you need a tire pressure gauge and obviously a couple buddies to help do the tires would be great so don't be like me don't forget your tarp don't forget your torque wrench because I did my buddy luckily had one or oh, you also need to make life easier if the battery powered impact you definitely need that because cranking down uh, 20 lugs or uh, in some cases 16 it's just much easier to have a battery powered uh, impact so now on to the practice run ice tires are on this is my first time doing ice racing with my R32 with my studded tires looks like I have a clearance problem with the front tires because the suspension is too low so my wheel wells wheel well liners pretty sure gonna get ripped out but anyways such is life uh, yeah so let's enjoy this huh So what you saw just there is the beginnings of my practice run. Unfortunately, my camera died outside. I was waiting too long to get these practice runs and the battery got cold and it died. But don't worry, there's more footage coming on. How they manage this event, that ice was very slick. Uh, normally ice is the kind, it's not slippery per se. Obviously ice is always slippery, but ice on a lake normally goes through stages of melting with the snow on there and it, it creates like a porous rough ice surface this ice was not rough I've never slipped so much just walking on ice in my life so what they requested is everyone with the studded racing tires go first so they could rip up the track for the guys that were just running snow tires talking about that uh, there are many different classes of ice racing. Firstly, there's front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, and all wheel drive categories. And within those categories, there's snow tires, studded tires, unlimited studded tires. But I will put a link right here or somewhere, probably down in the description, of the different classifications of ice racing. Be sure to check that out if you're interested in, in learning more about the categories you fall in. At this point, I've done a practice lap. I've actually done two practice laps. My ice tires seem great because, as I've already mentioned, it's so slippery walking on ice. But my ice tires also break loose, which is fun. If I wanted it to ride on a rail, I would just track it in the summer. I have 140 uh, spikes per tire, which I thought is enough. But there's guys that have 300, 400 spikes per tire. So there's guys that definitely have more grip than me. But it was actually fun. Uh, you could break free the, the back end. Uh, I recommend, <laughs> right now, I recommend you don't overdo it with the spikes. You can always add more spikes. You can never remove the spikes. Much harder to do that. So after that first practice run, I, I did realize I didn't have wiper and washer fluid. So let's pick up from there. But I did my first practice run, everything went fine. I got my buddies here helping me out, learn this spot. But if you look here, that's the clearance I was talking about earlier. It seemed to be fine, it's just right here. So, stupidly enough, I installed this wheel wells, or wheel liners. 
because I thought I needed them. Hey, there's blue. So I'm gonna try to fix my washer fluid because clearly it's coming out the grill. All right, guys, well, it appears there's still a ton of work to be done on the R32. I just realized I have no windshield wiper fluid. Someone appears to rip, have ripped those out. Uh, so that's fun, but good thing there's no salt on the lake. Uh, there's a great turn out here today. Check it out. I would say about 30 cars, maybe a bit less. Uh, this is the practice run, but someone just went off the course there. So that's why the line is uber big. Um, yeah, someone already took a number 32. So I decided 64 because this one's twice the weight of any other R32 out there, especially with me in it. Now, hopefully we can keep on going. Before we continue, it would be much appreciated if you could hit that like button and that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content. And also, if you have any questions that you think I've missed about ice racing, be sure to wait until the end. And if I don't answer them, uh, leave them in the comments below. So now we're going to jump into the part where I actually go ice racing for the first time, timed. Uh, both my camera inside and out work, but what I realized during my uh, practice sessions are my brakes are not bled correctly. I didn't do that right. Um, they worked, but they needed a lot of pumping. Uh, and this is also the first time I've actually driven the car since I've done any other work to it. Uh, the short shift is different, <laughs> the brakes are completely different, this time the rear brakes work where clearly my last ones didn't because the rotors were never touched. But that being said, the car is beeping, all the, all the lights, the warning lights are on because half of the thing's unplugged. Yeah, this is my first ice racing experience that's timed. Yeah, I'm not going to make any excuses, my shifting's terrible, uh, I'm learning, uh, but yeah, check it out. to what the all-wheel drive guys are getting. Jesus. 
He's ice racing guy, 64. All wheel drive spikes in the tires. I'm at 87. I'm not gonna push it too much. I like uh, my car where it is. All right, so you just watched my first full session of the track. And now I'm just gonna show you the second session. Same exact track, obviously. Um, but check it out and then we can talk some more. So, two races down, loving it, two practices down. I actually did two more timed laps. What happened the weekend before this weekend, it was 40 degrees, uh, and they already plowed the track. But with that, when you plow the track, it turns to 40, all that snow banks start melting. And then it got cold again, the snow banks turned into ice. So you might hear me uh, or heard me in the couple while well, I was driving. I didn't want to hit the banks because it's not just going into fluffy snow, that's like going into a, a wall. And unfortunately, one of the guys before me, uh, a good guy, was cruising. Ice was still slippery, but he had his spikes. He was going fast because he's racing. And he actually hit one of the banks and rolled his car. So yes, it is ice racing, it is fun, it's still racing, there's still cars, you still can die. Uh, but good to know, he was all fine, car was damaged, unfortunately. But that's what happened because the snow banks were ice. And he turned too sharp, he tried to correct it, he went up the bank and then he ended up flipping. Remember, this is still a dangerous sport. I do have a roll cage coming, that's also why I didn't push it. And that's also why I stopped off the, my fourth run because the car is not fully done. I don't have all the equipment in there. I wanted to at least get out there, figure out what I needed to do before I push myself. And I don't think I'll ever push myself too much. I'm trying to have fun. I'm not trying to be uh, the next rally car racer. So what I've learned about what I still need to do to my car, uh, this race is kind of different. It went from two to seven. Sun goes down at about 5 p.m. Ideally, I want to put a set of uh, rally lights on the R32. Don't know how I want to do it yet to light up all the ice at night. There is still something wrong with my left headlight. They are brand new headlights, but the bright doesn't come in. I don't know if the bulb is just broken. I need to fix that. My brakes, I've told you already, I need to fix the brakes. Uh, I have to pump them, so I think they just need to be bled. I did put my wheel wells in, as you saw earlier in the video, and those got ripped up, so I need to uh, fix those. I do need to look into getting better shocks. Everyone, when I first got to the track, didn't think my spikes, or didn't think the ride height of the R32 would let me race, uh, because the spikes would dig in, and lucky enough, the spikes never hit anything other than the, the wheel well lining. But I still wanna jack this car up, Basically, the height that the car is behind me, uh, it's about four or five inches from the wheel wells. This is how I want the ride height to be. Obviously, the whole interior still needs to be done. I definitely need to figure out a better way to put a rear tow hook in the back. 
I don't want to drill a hole in the bumper as we all know the R32 bumpers are not that easy to find but I was thinking I'm gonna get remember those old cars that you fill up behind the fuel tank I want or behind the the license plate I want to get the license plate bracket and then have the tow bolt behind the license plate obviously you don't need a license plate when you're racing um, but that would be great. Then it's a clean bumper. When I need to get towed, I just drop that down and I'll have something welded in there. Uh, what else did I realize in the car? The wiper fluid, clearly someone removed the sprayers. So I need to figure out and buy those. I filmed getting this car ready back together in three days. I think I'll put that out later. It was a mad rush. I don't know how good the filming is. Yeah, it was a lot of work getting this car ready just for this weekend. Glad I did it. Uh, it wasn't fun, uh, but 100% glad I did it. Let's see where I am in the part of the video now. Alrighty guys, well, it's the day after the ice racing. I filmed this on like 10 different cameras, unfortunately. Let me open this, get you some light. And now there's a blizzard of six to 10 inches today. And I'm towing a car and there's a huge crash that just happened and sh I was nearly part of a crash because towing a car in a blizzard on a trailer is not fun. But luckily, I was able to stop. I was almost 100% sure I was crashing. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just going to take it nice and slow the rest of the day. I've already passed like five accidents. Now to focus on the road uh, and get home safely. <laughs> I'll check in with you then. All right, guys, so as you can see, that was... Uh, pretty scary drive home it was normally a three and a half four hour drive that took I think it took me six hours to get home seven hours it was uh, very snowy and very scary um, made it home in one piece and the car is here so that's all good so let's just recap this video on everything you need to know about ice racing firstly ice racing is fun but it's also dangerous so just know that there's also many different classes in ice racing you don't need the spike tires to ice race so you can do it with general uh, all season tires but obviously snow tires are recommended then there are front wheel drive rear wheel drive and all wheel drive classes then there's unlimited studs a different stud class and i think that's it for all the different classes but the links below the next thing you need to do is remember to bring all the tools you need off the top of my head you definitely need uh, a torque wrench a general tool set like the one behind me with all the different sockets and wrenches if your car takes torque heads screwdrivers make sure you bring that <clears throat> bring a, a tire pump to blow up your tires because ice tires are known to leak be sure to bring a car jack you don't want to use the jack that comes with your car it's much easier just to use a, a hand crank jack like the average shop shop uh, jack um, and if you are changing the tires make sure you bring a tarp so you can lay on the tarp and not get all wet or just wear appropriate clothes which I'm never gonna do also remember when you are ice racing you need a front toe strap and a rear toe strap for when slash if you crash into a bank keep in mind that the snow banks on the side can be soft snow banks and they can be rock hard so just know your environment before you're racing because a lot of people don't have a separate race car they actually just race their current car and you don't want to bring your daily driver and then wreck it up because you pushed yourself thinking those banks were fluffy instead of rock hard so all in all um my first experience ice racing my r32 and learning it firsthand was great learning experience i'm glad i got the car done uh, it was a lot of work to get the car done to ice racing spec if you will I'm sure I'll learn a lot more, but if you have any questions uh, about ice racing, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Be sure to like the video and hit me with a subscribe. Uh, that'd be great. So thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll see you next time.